Hi Guido Fox here, welcome by a new book report. Today I want to discuss with you this book, Goodbye Things from Fumio Sasaki, the new Japanese minimalism. So it's a book, 260 pages about a minimalistic life. A minimalistic life to become more happier happier what you have and also have a less stressful life more freedom more quality time for yourself and what I first surprised that it is 260 pages uh, of information about how you can transform your life into a mini minimalistic life and what are the advantages of it the disadvantages of it uh, the pros and contrasts um, and how we can shape it for you for yourself but also if you live in a family how you can organize a very simple life uh, but a very happy blissful life with a lot of freedom low cost um, financial situations we gonna discuss in this video and more about this japanese uh, way of uh, way of life first i want to discuss with you an uh, interesting sentence i heard from elon musk the big billionaire Everyone knows Elon Musk and he is uh, also into this um, way of thinking about minimalism, about efficiency, right? You saw it with, uh, with X that he's declining the cost and the people who work there in the company. So very efficient way uh, of thinking. But he said also... Um, I saw it on YouTube and he said, okay, actually I want to live in a very small room and a very small house because I can be more creative. I have not so much distraction in a small room, in a small house. I can think clearly, I can think better. Um, so I can perform maybe better if I live and sleep in a small, uh, small apartment. Um, other things are also favorable is that um, if you have a billion dollar or you're a multimillionaire, then you have probably more houses and more houses means more administration, uh, means organizing things you have to organize your cleaners you have to organize your gardening uh, employees you have to organize the renovation people uh, the banking uh, finance you have to um, make ready for all those um, uh, investment houses um, I remember that Elon Musk had a house and there were all people making photographs out of his house there are a lot of people on the fence of his house and he bought uh, houses around his house uh, to avoid uh, this mechanism this social mechanism so you will see that he can be also happy in a little apartment in a flat on the highest level to have more protection there uh, or whatever but the main issue is here um, keep it simple keep it small uh, less is more so if you live very small very organized um, you have the feeling of freedom and people are saying also if they're coming by me in my coaching studio they say hey you have so much um, I feel so much experience of freedom even when you live in a very small apartment, right? So um, if you are very organized, you hold your house clean, you drop stuff 
um, what, what is not really needed in your life. And I will talk about that later with you more in detail form. You can experience this Japanese uh, minimalistic life. Uh, so there's a nice example of Elon Musk, how he lives and how he thinks. Uh, so uh, the main uh, favorable issue if you live in a very tiny apartment um, is that the rent is very low, right? So if your rent is very low, uh, it gives you so much freedom um, to go on holidays. You can go more outdoors. Uh, you can experience life. You can experience the world. You have more. Um, uh, you can buy more. Uh, quality time. I see so much people are working 60, 70 hours and they earn a lot of money and they invest it in housing or they buy a house or they rent an expensive house and they have to constantly work uh, that kind of hours um, to, uh, to live and to buy the house. And there is also a little bit of showing off ego mechanism there from look where I live, which area I live, what kind of house I have and what kind of gadgets I have. I will talk later about it, about ego mechanisms and minimalistic life. Uh, but yeah, the rent is low, uh, so you can buy more free time. I mean, you have to work maybe 20 hours instead of uh, 40, 50, 60 hours to um, survive and to hold some money for your holidays or for the nice uh, things you want to do in your quality time. Uh, invest in time, invest in quality time. That's what Fumio Sasaki is saying in his book. And quality time in at page 165 is the ultimate luxury. The ultimate luxury is freedom. The ultimate luxury in life is quality time with your friends, uh, with the people you love um, to enjoy life instead of working all the time. So that's the one favorable mechanism about living very small in a very small apartment is that um, your rent is very low. So it's easier to buy more quality time. What is also nice in this book is there are a lot of pictures in the first um, 10 pages how you can organize your house in a more efficient way. Um, but then you have to buy uh, then you have to buy this book. <coughs> Other favorable thing is that um, you have less stuff. So you have less stuff in your house. That means that you have also less to clean and also less time to clean your house. Uh, and a lot of people are saying, yeah, but uh, if I have so much money, I can rent my cleaners. But the cleaners are coming too late. You have other people in your energy field. You have to control them. You have to pay them. Uh, they are on at unexpected times. You have to be home at that time when the cleaners are coming. So all those kind of rubbish in your life, um, you want to decline. Um, if you want to have more freedom and peace and less stress in your life. Eh, or maybe the cleaners are not good enough and, they, um, and you have to control them or you have to fire them. So uh, you can do it better yourself. Uh, so. Um, how less stuff you have, how less um, chairs you have, how less tables you have, how less kitchen doors you have, how less you have to clean and how less time investment per week you have to make to clean your kitchen. Uh, so a small kitchen, less time for clean, that means more time more quality time for the useful and important things in life. So that's a very favorable thing about um, cleaning uh, your house on an efficient way. 
<clears throat> the ego magnetism. So the normal matrix path of people is that they go into a job, they earn a little bit more money and they're going to have a bigger house. So a bigger house means more stuff in uh, your house, more unusual stuff in your rooms, not very efficient. I come in some houses, they you're a full big house and you have so much rooms with uh, unuseful things. Yeah? So uh, the ego aspect here is that you, of course, wants to grow um, in your housing. Bigger house means more showing off mechanisms, more gadgets, more bigger television, bigger cars, bigger this, bigger that. And actually you want to show off to your neighbors, you want to show off to your family, you want to show off to your friends, look what I got. And so the normal matrix bet is that you're going into a job, you make promotion and you're invested money in housing. So everyone do it, the sheep mentality here. So you don't do that because you're following Guido Fox. So uh, you going, I contrario, you can, against the matrix pet, you go against the matrix sheep pet, you gonna live, when you make promotion in your company, you're gonna live in a very small apartment and going on holidays eight to 10 times per year. Or you're gonna work less. Work less means work more efficient because you're more fresh in a 20 hours work instead of the 40 hours work. And then your colleagues become jealous, right? Because you're going on 10 times per year on holiday and work less and you have a very more relaxed, healthy, at ease life. But that you have to do because you're following Guido Fox and not the main sheep crowd, right? So the ego mechanisms is that you've gone away that um, uh, you don't have to show up for your girlfriend, you don't have to show up for your wife, you don't have to show up for your colleagues, you don't have to show up for your, um, uh, for your family that you can buy bigger houses or with more gadgets and luxur luxurious cars. I'm okay if you buy it, if you really love the car. I have also my wonderful supercars. I would like to ride in it. I would love to see the wonderful curves of the luxurious cars. I would love to buy them, but it is not an ego thing. It is because I really like the construction of the car and I really like the curves of the car. And I really, that there was a lot of human capital in that car to make it, right? Um, it's not that I want to show off uh, to my neighbors. So that's a short principle that you can become more happier in your life and more at ease and more relaxed in a more efficient, um, controllable also life and controllable minimalistic life. A few things you can do to make it easier uh, and create more space in your apartment. Um, one thing is remove the multi-people things. Uh, example here is that you have maybe three scissors, make it one. Uh, if you have a lot of knives in your kitchen, only the useful knives. Uh, if you have uh, five, six bed uh, towels in your uh, bedroom, and that's a wonderful picture in his book about this guy is living in a bedroom with only one towel. One towel is enough, right? So you can remove uh, the multi-people things uh, in your apartment. Why you should have nine different hair conditioners, nine different shampoos, um, why you should have uh, three, four tables in your room, why you should have three televisions in your room, um, why you have uh, five, six um, um, chairs in your room and you use mostly two or three. Uh, so you can look around in your apartment and think, okay, uh, what kind of multi people things I have and what I really use. He said also in his book, the hell yes, hell yes, I use this. 
I use this on a daily base. And if I don't use it for a year, drop it away. Drop it away. You don't use it for a year. If you see things I don't use it, drop it away. Even it costed you a lot of money. So if you invest so much money in a television and you don't use the television, uh, their example in this book, you bought a television for $20,000 um, and you don't use it, throw away your television. If you have a computer and you don't use it, go away with the computer. Um, so all those bullshit things, um, throw it away and you create more space in your um, in your apartment. So get off, rid, get rid of the things you haven't used in a year. Uh, avoid multiple things and leave empty spaces empty. Um, what you a lot of times see in, um, uh, in small apartments or housing uh, is that people are going to fill up empty spaces in the house. So, okay, here we have an empty space. What are we dropping there? Oh, we can buy a boat. Maybe we can drop the boat in the garage. Oh, we have, uh, uh, we have nothing there. Let's buy a table tennis table um, construction to place in the garage. And we use it actually only three times per year. Um, so all those things, what you don't use a lot, remove it. You can play table tennis somewhere in your neighborhood. You can go to a table tennis um, club to do it for one time. I will talk about later about the renting mechanism. Uh, renting me mechanism and also uh, Andrew Tate, maybe you know him, is also a billionaire. And he only rent things. Uh, he stopped stopped with buying things, and that's a very interesting thing. I want to talk later with you. Uh, but you can rent a table, table, uh, tennis table, table uh, for one day and let them come. Uh, so um, everything what you don't use a lot, drop it. Rigorous, drop it out of your life. So. Leave empty spaces empty. Don't put it full of stuff. You see it all over life with their children in, in family and they get knuffles, they get um, Playmobil, uh, knacks, um, uh, uh, fake dogs, right? Um, uh, knuffles, I don't know the English term here. Uh, um, but you see a lot of times if you come in rooms of children, it is so full loaded of nonsense and the children become so distracted uh, that there's no time for a contemplative and ease and relaxed life. So get away of things, um, what is overblowing the mind of you and your children. That's actually one to, that I want to say. Even when you paid a lot of money for the television, what I told, drop it away, drop uh, the sunk cost mechanism. Oh, I paid so much for this cloth. Um, I paid so much. I want to hold it. I want to keep it. And that's uh, distorting your minimalistic way of life. So sell the things, you can sell the television, um, that's a good action to, uh, to do, to sell the things uh, you don't want to use anymore. Um, rent, what can be rented? If you have a marriage, uh, rent the clothes. Um, if you go on a holiday, um, rent the ski, rent the clothing for the skiing, for the ski fire. Uh, so if you go on holiday, uh, um, uh, rent the clothes there. If you have a marriage, rent the clothes. If you want to go somewhere with a car, rent a car. If you want to go somewhere, um, if you don't use the car a lot, you use only a car three times per year, rent a car. 
Um, if you want to go on holiday, rent a car. If you um, um, uh, want to have a boat trip, rent the boat. Yeah, so there are a lot of cases you can rent things. And that's much more better because you have only one time cost expensive and you don't have to constantly uh, think about renovation, reparation. The boat has to go to the garage uh, to fill the gasoline. Uh, the goat is gone stuck and you have to repair the boat. So a lot of nonsense, uh, the, the same administrative nonsense of the boat is the same as the administrative nonsense of all those houses you have. Uh, so drop all those administration. Um, so rent what can be rented. That is also what Andre Tate was saying is one of the things I agree with him. A lot of things I don't agree with him. But this thing was very wise. If you're even a billionaire, rent. Rent a hotel room. Uh, rent your house. You can be away in one week if you don't like it anymore there. So rent. Uh, that is um, interesting. And if you rent for a very low price, you can invest, of course, the rest of your finance into stocks uh, or into ownership. Uh, so... Uh, a lot of people are investing in their house. They think, I want to invest in my house. But what you're doing is playing one card game. You invest in your house and that's your only investment. You can invest one million in one house, but you can also buy one million stocks divided on the whole world and divided in a thousand companies. So you can more in diverse uh, portfolio there right so um, there are a lot of things that are crazy in the matrix that everyone is buying a house but there's also a big risk of buying a house in Amsterdam maybe the ground is not good or your uh, there is a sinkhole your house is uh, uh, falling into the kennel here so a lot of risk to invest all your money in one house so there's also a reason to rent uh, to avoid that finance, financial risk um, so rent, what can be rented? I find it a very interesting um, point in a minimalistic life. Also here, a uh, suitcase. Uh, if you want to go on holiday, rent a suitcase. They bring it to your house, suitcase, and they pick it up in your house. And you don't have to put the suitcase somewhere <coughs> in, an, uh, in a storage if you're not going so much on holiday, right? If you're going every month, I give you the chance to uh, to have a suitcase, but it is also an option to rent your suitcase um, uh, to go on, uh, on uh, holidays. Number six, this is some small row about tips about minimalistic life. I didn't tell, I told you the one to five, but six is one in one out mechanism. So if you buy something uh, in your house, uh, a new pillow, uh, maybe, and you don't need five to six to seven pillows on your couch, um, remove the other one, drop it, right? The old pillows away, the new pillows in. Uh, so uh, one thing in is one thing out. That means that you hold your house clean and fresh and not so much stuff in the house. Buying only things, number six, uh, seven, excuse me, buy only things if it is hell yes. If you doubt about a candle you want to buy, don't buy it. Uh, so only, wow, this I want to have, this is a nice statue or a nice plant um, or a nice painting on the wall. You think, wow, I want to have this then you can buy it, right? And only buy and hell yes. That's a very interesting uh, sentence uh, in the life coaching in the Japanese minimalistic life. So if you live a minimalistic life, uh, you don't have to go every weekend to the shopping mall. You don't have to go to the um, a furniture mall to look to sofas. You don't have to go to shopping all the weekend in those stores. 
And so you don't have to look for all those gadgets in your life. So less time spent on shopping means more quality time with your friends or whatever, or to party. Uh, um, so less time shopping here. So less time shopping you need to fulfill all those ego mechanisms in this world. Cleaning your house. I told with you already about um, if you live in a bigger house, you have more stuff, uh, more time spent on cleaning and the smart people are saying, yeah, but you're rich, you can hire, hire those cleaners, but the cleaners don't do their work good. You have to fire them uh, or they disturb you in your work uh, mentality. Uh, or they're doing the work not good, or you have to administration about the payments, um, or they, you have to be home at that time. And if you be home at the time, there's less freedom, less feeling of freedom because you have to be home. Uh, um, so uh, what Aristotle is saying um, in his work, in his, uh, in his books, it's very interesting is little by little day by day so if you want to clean your house i do it every day 10 to 20 minutes so i keep a corner in my house now the kitchen now the table now the window so every morning i clean a little bit my house um, i come back in a clean house in a fresh house so every day i clean my house a little bit so i stay there routine i stay there routine in cleaning uh, cleaning my house and that makes me also more happy um, and a feeling of refreshed energy is uh, moving into my small minimalistic apartment. And so Aristotle cleaning method is actually very simple. Every day a little bit cleaning your house and the matrix is also program you to do it once per week <coughs> or once per two weeks. So the matrix um is always uh, one time per two weeks or one time per week and you're always hesitated oh my god i have to clean my house oh my i have to clean my house on friday afternoon oh i have to spend two hours for cleaning my house and you avoid that threshold um to clean your house if you do it every day a little bit because 20 minutes per day or 10 minutes per day makes one or two hours per week right um, so that is interesting. So if you let go your ego, uh, if you let go your ego, you're not so jealous anymore on those famous stars in the world with their big houses. And that's exactly what's happening with me too. I was in the past, oh my God, he's so rich. I'm jealous, all those super guards, hot girls there. Uh, and I was always jealous uh, about celebrities, about uh, about uh, famous people, wow, all those cameras and they're playing in movies and they have a shiny life. And now I think, oh my God, he has six boats. All those boats have, have to go to the garage, all those thinking about it, all those managing, all those financial streams about the housing. Uh, um, so all those administration of rich people and you have to trust also your managers of course uh, you have to control your employees holy shit all those mental things uh, uh, to deal with when you're very rich and famous eh? oh my god so big house how you clean this house so sometimes i write here and answer them i see those big houses. oh my god i have to clean that house if i live there i don't want to live there so you have um you can better deal um, uh, you can be more happier uh, if you live a minimalistic life and you're not comparing uh, every time um, with others. Uh, you don't compare with other people who have more money or more famous um, or whatever. And a big house means uh, more chance on criminality. Less stuff in your house, less gadgets. Criminals are not interested in your house uh, no rolex no golden diamonds no expensive stuff in my house uh, so there's less chance on criminality 
Uh, so if you live in a big house, more safety problems. You have to protect your garden. You have to protect your house, double glass, um, um, security systems. Uh, so feeling of unsafety there is, um, is kicking in. So if you live in a smear, very small, small apartment, a lot of criminals <coughs> are thinking, I um, don't take the risk because the, <coughs> the outcome is uh, very low. So that's mostly the social dynamics of criminals. Um, if the chance of a Rolex is very high, <coughs> then I um, try to break in that house. But if the chance of a Rolex is very low um, and the, the trade deal is not so comfortable, I don't go in that small apartment. So that's also a reason to live in a small apartment um, because of the risk of criminality and uh, physical pain or mental pain, right? If you be kidnapped, it <coughs> is very low. Yeah, so um, that's also favorable to live in a small apartment and live a minimalistic life. <coughs> Another favorable thing is that if you live small, um, you're forced to become more outdoors. And when I lived by uh, my parents or other houses were more bigger, I was more inside. I was watching television, I was on the couch, I was uh, 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 sitting in the garden, um, on the balcony. Uh, so um, if you live in a more bigger apartment, you're more inside. So I want to escape about this small apartment. I really like it here, the high spiritual energy, but I want to go more outdoors. So if you live a very minimalistic life, you're forced to go outside. You're forced to go um, uh, to nature. You're forced to go to nice places. You're forced to go to meet people outside. So um, that's a favorable in your, in your living mechanisms. You're forced to go live a more natural life thinking. I think to live more outdoors and that's healthy because if you're outdoor, you're moving more, you're moving more, you're running, you're walking, you're seeing things, you become more social than that you're locking yourself up in your big palace. So that's a very favorable mechanism about the minimalistic life is that you are forced to become more outdoors. Friends, the last, the last part, friends. So many people have so much friends, but not the friends you want to have, not the diamonds of society. And the friends you have are probably very empty and not really constructive for your life. So what he's saying also in the minimalistic Japanese way of living is skip the bad friends, the so-called friends. Go for five or three friends. That's enough. Five to three friends, really friends, uh, are real friends, really can talk good with them, seeing it some, sometimes, not every week, but really save time there and become more efficient with your friends. Then you can have also more time for yourself. So a lot of people um, especially women I see, they're going to parties, to parties, to friends, to friends, and all those social things. Uh, keep you busy all the time, keep you stressful all the time. Reduce your friends a little bit. Um, be, become also more alone, be happy alone and not flying away every time in the social constructs. Um, so here a tip and advice from Fumio to also be more efficient and minimalistic with your friends and your social construct because the five big friends in your life you become. So you're really affected by the five people in your surroundings. Uh, so become a little bit more critical with who you go. So that is, I think, very favorable, uh, favorable for your life. So these are all the tips and advices from a minimalistic life. I found it a very interesting topic and book, especially so much information to transform uh, your life to a minimalistic uh, vision. Thank you for watching and I see you by the next uh, book report. Bye bye.